Hey YouTube friends and family, thought I'd get on here and share another story with you. These stories are kind of a uh, food for thought series. I hope you enjoy. And if the stories are a little too long, perhaps you can listen to part and come back and visit again for a follow-up to get to the conclusion. Let me know if you enjoy with a simple thumbs up or a comment, comment, or both. I really enjoy, and I hope that you enjoy the stories. The title of this one is The Neighborhood Help System. The timer on my stove chimed that it was time to remove the aromatic roast that had been cooking for over two hours. A savory scent triggered each taste bud to excrete saliva in anticipation. No doubt in my mind that Mrs. Sanders next door could smell it, too, along with her clan of six children. Adding just the right seasoning always tempted the hunger pangs to awaken. I smiled as I opened the oven, removed the lid to my Dutch oven, and placed the thermometer into the center of the huge roast. Buying the biggest roast and getting it cooked would help to complete a week's menu of mouth-watering recipes. The butcher at my market was a rough-looking guy named Bruce. To first look at him, one might think that he should be riding the bull rather than selling it. And sell it he did, in more ways than one. Bruce was always more than willing to share some wild story that he had read in the news or observed on his way to work. An asset to the market's butcher department, Bruce was always more than happy to cut any special order roast when I asked. A smile adorned his rough face when he saw me approach, as he knew I was there for a grand order, one that perhaps in days of yore may very well have been fit for a king. You're looking chipper today, Mrs. C. What can I do for you? Chicken breast on sale, buy one, get one free, he said. He chuckled and spoke at the same time, a talent that I, for one, would never master. I remember thinking at one time, if this was his normal way of speaking, is this how he always talked? I questioned. I explained what I wanted, and he was prompt to jump right in to fill my order, displaying the roast as if it were some gorgeous model on a runway. Prior to my acceptance and the wrapping and posting of a label designed for the price and weight. Yes, it would be a great roast for what I had planned. If all worked out, it would definitely stretch far into the week, making menu planning quite easy and inexpensive. I was always one to stretch the dollar as far as I could. This proved to be an asset quality for my adulthood, allotting my family many trips and vacations over the years. Still, though, we enjoyed life. We were able to save a fair amount of money at the same time for a rainy day. I grabbed the hot pads and carefully removed the covered roast to the counter. Here it would rest while I mashed the potatoes and heated the carrots. Once the table was set, we would sit down, say our blessing, and devour the luscious meal. My children would yum, with the exception of one son, Timothy, who refused to come to the table to eat. And my husband, if he were here, would praise me for a job well done. I would feel satisfaction knowing that each belly was filled and that my family was in good health. Dessert would follow after supper had settled, usually a scoop of ice cream or a slice of homemade pie. Yes, I took great care of my family. They were never leaving the table hungry or going to school on an empty belly. Mrs. Sanders, I heard, had heard through the grapevine, could not say that. In fact, I heard my own children say that Mrs. Sanders' children, several, seldom, if ever, 
ate a nutritious breakfast prior to their six to eight hours a day at school. What a non-caring mother, I recall thinking. She surely does not love as deeply as I do. I mean, how could she? I mean, how hard is it to get up and fix breakfast for your precious children? Mr. Sanders once worked for the lumber yard on the outskirts of town. I wasn't sure if he still did or not. I, it seemed he came and went all hours of the day. Mrs. Sanders, last I heard, worked cleaning houses for the Richies on the other side of town. Working for rich people probably paid well, I thought. I wondered why she never dressed up like me. I mean, I had seen her at the school's parent meeting just a week ago, and she hadn't even bothered to put makeup on her face. Her clothes looked like something a person might find in a second-hand store's free bin. Yes, she sure must not handle money as well as I did, I gloated to myself as I removed the dishes from the table. Stacking them in the sink to rinse, I suddenly noticed Mrs. Sanders in her back screened in porch. Her porch and my kitchen window lined up perfectly on each other. I remember in the summer, as I worked around in my kitchen, I often saw her sitting alone on the porch, waving a towel as if it were a dollar store fan in an attempt to cool herself or maybe shoe flies. This time the scene before me made me take a second look. I struggled to focus on what she was doing. As she turned, I saw her hands wipe something from her face, or so it seemed. Couldn't be flies this deep into the winter, I thought to myself. Must be something else. Oh well, never mind, I said to myself. Not my problem. Pie anyone? I hollered into the other room where my children sat taking turns in teams with the Wii U game. They all came running except for Timothy, my middle son. Having dished up the pie, I returned to the living room and there I found Timothy sitting on the couch deep in thought. What's up, son? I asked as I sat down beside him. Nothing, Mom. Just thinking, he replied. Can I just go to my room? I don't want no pie. I looked deeper into his eyes as the words departed his lips. I could see he was troubled, and I wondered what it was. Why don't you want pie? I asked in a very concerned voice. Aren't you feeling well? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I just have a problem with a friend, and I'm kind of trying to figure it out, he said. Well, perhaps if you let me know what it is, I can help, I answered. Well, you see, Mom, it's, um, it's about, oh, Mom, I promised I wouldn't tell no one. Hmm. I shook my head. I understand. Okay. I do understand that. But, well, sometimes moms aren't no one. And if you share, they usually can help. I said in a most persuasive voice that I had, Curiosity was really building up now. It was not like Timothy to be like this. It had to be something really big for him, my cheerful, cheerful clown, to be this upset. It's entirely up to you, son. Let me know if I can help. I'm going to have me a big piece of pie. With that, I stood up and walked towards the kitchen, taking note that he, too, had left the front room. 
he had headed down the hallway. I couldn't help but watch as he entered his bedroom. The kitchen was clean and the children headed for bed. The morning alarm was not one of our most favorite things in the house. Rising at 5 a.m. every morning was not always easy and often, more than not, took more work on my part than it should as each child begged for just five more minutes of slumber. The coldness of the house, I think, added to the uncomfortable feeling of getting up and moving that early. I, too, did not like mornings, not on school days. Once all the children were in bed, all four of them, I sat down to watch my favorite program on the television. Glancing up, I saw Timothy walking towards me. Mom, I need to ask you something. He spoke in an almost whimper. What is it, son? I inquired as my heart stepped its beat up a notch. Something had to be wrong, I thought, as I locked my eyes with my son. The happy-go-lucky child that now stood in front of me with an end-of-the-world look on his face. It's about Billy. You know Billy, Timothy said. Billy? Billy Sanders? I asked. Um, yeah, Mom. That's the only Billy I know, he exclaimed in an almost annoyed voice, as if by some superior sense of ESP, I should know the who, what, where, when, and why. If it's okay with you, Mom, I want to take some food over to Billy for him and his and the other kids. I felt my brows drop into a version of unibrow as the shock of something kind of electrical, like an electrical charge, ran through my body at the same time. Food? I said with an air of disbelief. Timothy hung his head. I was going to sneak some, Mom, but, well, I thought I'd get grounded if I did. He started to well up. Why would you want to take food to Billy? I watched his nose wrinkle. He always did that when he cried. He began telling me about the story Billy had relayed earlier in the day. It seemed that the children had been going to school hungry. Their mom was crying most of the time and would not go to the store. Wouldn't go to the store? Mr. Sanders was barely around, and when he did come home, he and his wife became the contestants of Battles in the Homes of America. Timothy, are you telling me that the Sanders children have no food? My son shook his head, yes, while mumbling, uh-huh. According to the story spewing from my son's memory of the conversation with Billy, his brothers and sisters had eaten the last can of tuna, and it was mixed with the last can of Crumble's tomato soup. Sort of like a tuna soup, Mom, Timothy said. But Mom, that was last night, and, well, Billy was crying at school until lunch when I shared mine with him. I kind of let him eat it all, Mom. And, well, I didn't want to eat supper because uh, it isn't fair to Billy. Know what I mean, Mom? Why didn't you say anything earlier, son? I asked in my most concerned voice. Well, Mom, remember when I told you that Mrs. Sanders needed some butter and you said, too bad, she can run to the store the same as you do? Gas and butter were too expensive to throw around? Do you, Mom, do you remember saying that? 
I knew you'd make Mrs. Sanders just go to the store. And, well, I don't think she has the gas in her car or something. So can I take my supper over to the kids? Mom, can I? Mom, can I? My mind heard his words, but in a kind of dreamlike state. Suddenly, I could see the children eating possibly molded bread with no butter at all. I cringed. Don't worry, son. Don't worry. I said with a pat of confidence and a smile. I will handle this. The Sanders children will be fine. Your friend Billy will have food. Now, get along. Go get in bed. Let me handle it. Um, Mom, are you gonna give Billy my supper? I turned and looked at my son. My little boy, who all of a sudden seemed so aged. Yeah, yeah, I will. Unless you'd like to eat it now, and I can make Billy and his brothers and sisters their own plates. Tim Timothy jumped up with joy. Will you, Mom? Will you? Sure, I said. We have plenty. I heard the voice echo in my head several times. Several statements. Just call the state. If the parents cannot care for their own damn children... I mean, six? Give me a break. I shook that thought off. Didn't even know where it was coming from. They are not my worry. Again, I shivered. What kind of mother would let her kids go hungry anyway? She deserves to lose them. Can I help, Mom? Timothy's voice interrupted my thoughts. Thank God. No, honey. Run off to bed. I will handle this. Don't worry now. Rest your head. Go on. Off to bed. Once Timothy had entered his room, I stood up and started towards the kitchen window to see if by some wild chance she, Mrs. Sanders, heck, I didn't even know her first name, was still on the porch. If I were smart, I mean, I cannot afford to feed the damn neighborhood. I'd... I shook the thought off again. Food is too expensive. Bill won't like this one bit. Bill, my husband, drove long-haul truck. He was gone also, most of the time. Seldom did he stay home for more than three days at a time. Though, when he was home... We went over the, all the expenses and bills, the events that had taken place, grades for the children, and yes, in our wee time, we shared dreams of our future. Places to go and things to see, he'd say. A smile adorned my face at the thought of him. One thing Bill did not like was lazy or wastefulness. The rainy day theory. Just good sense, he'd say. I could hear him as if it as if he were in the room with me. I looked up at the clock, ten minutes of ten. I had spoken to Bill earlier, and he was going to sleep. He had had bad weather to endure and was beat. No, I won't call and wake him, I said aloud. This is bull. I should just call the cops. Let them handle starving kids and be done with it. Just as the thought ran its course, I peered out the window, only to see my own reflection. I froze in place for a moment. I looked half evil, like some mom monster was peering back at me. I turned away from the window, waited a second, cleared my head, and looked back. Yes, the reflection was me, this time with a nicer face kinder thought, and yes, tears. Who am I really, I thought. When Bill and I first got married and had Jason, our first son, we sat on orange crates for crying out loud. We ate our dinner on a makeshift table made out of an electric line spool. 
that someone had given us. Suddenly I was lost in memories of days long gone. Hard times flowed in and out of my memories as if dancing for my own self-worth, the me I was meant to be. I focused harder out the window. Only one light was on in Mrs. Sanders' house. I went to the coat closet, threw on a jacket, and went straight over. Knocking on the door, again the tears came. Please bless this family, Lord. Help me to help them. Yes? Mrs. Sanders had spoke from beyond the door. Mrs. Sanders, I said, it's me, Mrs. Castor from next door. I heard the click of a couple locks, and then standing there in front of me was a very tired-looking woman in her late thirties. May I come in for a moment, I asked, seeing my own breath in the cold air. Oh, yes, please do. Come in out of the cold. What can I do for you? Her voice was kind and a tone of concern for me. She was concerned for me. That was blended in her voice. We spent a few minutes talking, crying, and holding each other. I mean snot running down faces crying. The kind you get when the most horrific things happen in life. Mr. Sanders had been laid off when the mill went down for the owls. Yeah, closed up for the owls. Mrs. Sanders still worked, but was on call only. They called her when they needed her. The state had chipped in with just enough food stamps to get them through half a month. At the terrible inflation of food prices, she was trying to stretch them out as far as she could. They just did not last. Never did she buy anything that was not a necessity, no junk food, just good and cheap, good and the cheapest food she could find. I scolded her for not saying something and asked her to forgive Billy, as he did what we were supposed to do. He turned to a brother for help. Boxes of food from our food storage were carried over to the Sanders' home. We filled her shelves and even gave bags of popcorn for the children, cans of juice, and yeah, ice cream from the freezer. Children love desserts, don't we all know that? I dished up half of the roast that I had cooked along with carrots and potatoes, all ready to serve. The children got up from their beds and devoured like hungry animals. I watched from a distance and learned. Yes, I was learning. Learning something taught by two little boys. The next day I went to all my neighbors and we formed a coalition called the Neighbor Help System. Each neighbor of the 29 that joined took one We Care box some took two or three, to the Sanders' home. We all pitched in $10 a month for a period of six months to help with their overhead, which set Mrs. Sanders' expenses even and back on track. Oh, and some anonymous person or persons set up an account at the J.C. Penney of $1,000 for the Sanders family. I saw the children with new shoes on their feet just today. Haven't seen any new clothes on Rita. That's Mrs. Sanders. I do know her first name now. However, I did note that she and I are just about the same size. So we are going to go through my closet and she will have a new wardrobe. Well, new to her and like new. As for Jack, Mr. Sanders, he will be riding jump seat and learning how to drive that big truck with Bill. After he learns, he can apply for a position with the same company that Bill works for. Bill's already talked to his boss or any company of his choice. Yes, things are looking up in our neighborhood. Well, all 29 of us in the neighborhood help system 
know the power of family. You see, we are all one family. All the people, all the world's people, one big, happy, healthy family. At least in our neighborhood. By the way, have you ever looked at your own reflection in a mirror or perhaps in a window's glass? You may want to check it out just to see who you are, really. So there, friends, I hope you enjoy. Great big hugs, a whole bunch of love. And uh, can you think of anything better than a neighborhood help system? I can't. Love you bunches.